it's really good to be here. I can't believe that we have a hundred sessions with this fellowship. And to me, it's like a spice cart falling out of the sky that the land of Israel fellowship, the one thing that has brought us all together is the land of Israel. And it is that that this Torah portion really guides us to. I mean, we encounter the greatest sin in the Torah. And the truth is that's just really counterintuitive. If you would have told me the greatest sin, I would have said murder. I would have said the golden calf, idolatry. There's just so many complaining, not trusting in God. I don't know. There's a, a million sins that could have really pointed us to the worst of all sins. And the Torah points it to us because it's not intuitive. It's not an obvious claim, but it happened on the ninth of Av. And that is a day that we continue to commemorate to this very day, the destruction of the first temple on the ninth of Av, the destruction of the second temple on the ninth of Av. The demolition orders were handed out in Gush Katif in the land of Israel just about a decade ago, or a little bit more than a decade, maybe two decades ago, on the ninth of Av. Destruction after destruction, and the seeds of that, of the saddest day of the year, the sin that the people of Israel we weren't able to atone for, we weren't able to say we're sorry, was the sin of the spies. I mean, we worshipped idols after God in the Ten Commandments says, do not worship idols. And we go and we worship idols. It's like, what a slap in the face. We were able to fix that. We were able to figure out how to do it. But the sin of the spies, it was like, I'm sorry, you're not going into the land of Israel anymore. Enough is enough. That's the ninth of Av. And that's actually going to be a day of crying now for generations to come. And 3,000 plus years later, we're still suffering from that sin. It's almost like our relationship with Hashem, we're being told here, is expressed through the land of Israel. If you don't love the land of Israel, you're missing something. If you are not connected to the land of Israel, you're missing something. Our relationship with God is going to somehow be mediated through the land. If we don't behave in the land, the land is going to spit us out. And when we come back to the land, and when we're outside of the land, the land is going to shut down. The land will just become desolate. No one will be able to flourish there. Nothing will be able to grow there. And then when the Jewish people return to the land of Israel, the land is going to start to flourish again. It's like, how do we know um, where God is, what God's feeling, where we're at in this journey toward redemption? It's all expressed through the land of Israel. And it's here we see behind us, like sort of the heart and the mission in some ways of the land of Israel fellowship, like a headquarters, a physical reality that we're all building together. And where did we go to? to the edge of the desert in the middle of nowhere, in the edge of Jewish settlement in the land of Israel, as deep in to the promised land as the Jews had arrived, and we started building there. And, you know, there is no sure sign of the coming of Mashiach than when the Jewish people return to the land of Israel and the land starts to flourish again. And, you know, the land of Israel fellowship on our 100th session. I just want to show you what we started this week. And this is really an amazing story. Because a small group of fellowship members came to the farm as a team. They were all from Colorado. They all love us to death. They follow us. Whenever I'm in Colorado, they host us. And they came out to the farm. And post-COVID, there hasn't been any tour groups that have come out to the farm. I think they were of the first, if not the first, one of the first that had come out. But they were the first tour group from the United States where the bus refused to come. They're like, oh, sorry, your road... It's just not up to code anymore. We've received notice. You can't come out to the Aru Goat Farm on a bus anymore. And that's pretty devastating for the Aru Goat Farm because the whole purpose of the Aru Goat Farm is that buses from the United States and Europe and around the world come out to our farm to experience the spirit of Judea. And they stop outside the gate. And then there's about, I don't know, a, a kilometer of road that Ari had to drive back and forth with his little tractor, put people in the back of the tractor, drive them back and forth. It was a little bit traumatic because it was unexpected, and that just had never happened ever from a group in the United States where the bus wasn't able to come. It actually happened a few times since then, and the group came from Colorado with a check in their hand, and I didn't know anything. <laughs> you know, we're just hosting people. Sometimes they bless us. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they help support us. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes people come, and they leave, and you just never—and then a few months later, you just never know what's going to happen, and— 
when we realized that we had, I mean, we ran this whole campaign now to fix up the infrastructure of the farm and the road was part of it because buses can't come there anymore. It's just two, um, seven years, a dirt road needs to be maintained. And we priced it out. And the blessing that they gave us was the exact original quote that we got to fix the road. And it was like, as if they came, they were stopped. And before they even knew it, because they brought that donation from the United States before they ever knew they were even coming and when they were coming and what they needed. And it was like a perfect reality that they came, they were stopped, but don't worry, they had it going. And so I just want to share you this clip that I made uh, this week, or at least I, last week, it's like the, the week of the fellowship, um, as I was running in the morning through the mountains, because you talk about speaking slander of the land of Israel. What's the opposite of that? It's loving the land so much that you would go out to the edge of the desert and start building her up and making her beautiful. So I wanted to show you the first steps of our absolute revolution <laughs> that we're starting now on the Arugon farm with our campaign coming to an end. And this was the first steps of that. So I want you to say- Hey, it. good morning. I'm just in the middle of my run here and I wanna show you what's happening. Right here behind us, the truck is bringing the new top layer to pave the road from Ibeya Nachal back to the Aru Goat Farm. This funny looking tractor here is the one that sort of straightens it out. And then there's this big rolling guy. He comes and then flattens it. But if you can see now, behind us, the road to the Aru Goat Farm is slowly being repaved because of our campaign. We are now fixing the infrastructure bringing the Aru Goat Farm up to code. But there's something deeper that's happening here as the rocks are spilling out behind me. If you look at an aerial view of the farm, our road is so beautiful. And who could have imagined just a dirt road being so beautiful? But somehow it's like a stroke of a painting. And really that's what we're building here on the Aru Goat Farm work of art. King David says, I am my prayer. He doesn't say, I have a life and then sometimes I pray. He's like, no, I am the prayer. And really that's what he's teaching us, that our whole life could be a prayer to God. The life that we live, the things that we do, the family that we raise, the places that we build, all of this is our prayer. It's our work of art that at the end of our lives we'll present to our Creator and look at the masterpiece from the unpaved desert roads to the newly paved road and the Aru Goat Farm. And so in the mountains of Judea, we are quite literally constructing the crown, the diamond on the crown in the mountains of Judea. So thank you all so much as we are rebuilding the Judean frontier with your help. Thank you. Anyway, I wanted you to see that, that we just started. We're getting going now. We started now. I mean, it's just, it's, I'm, the truth is, I mean, I'm leaving this Saturday night or Sunday morning, depends how you look at it, uh, on a lecture tour to the United States. We're starting off, I think we're landing in Newark. And then we're crossing Pennsylvania, Ohio, Indiana, Colorado. I forgot the name of the states, to Texas. And then we're going all the way back <laughs> to Florida. My poor children are going to be dizzy by the end of that trip. But um, I, I'm, I'm a little bit upset that I'm going to miss all of the, I'm going to come back to a new farm because we have so much planned. And my, my dream is that there is a center in Haifa called the Baha'i Gardens. And I don't know much about the Baha'i religion. I think that they very much respect the Bible, but I, there is just no reason the Aru Goat Farm should not rival the Baha'i Gardens. Like this mountain area here, why can't we make this more beautiful than the Baha'i Gardens in Haifa? We should just make it an absolute masterpiece. And we're starting, we just started now. So thank you all for that. And could it have been in better timing than on Parashat Shlach? And I want to tell you this story <laughs> because when we first moved out, Tehila and I, to the farm, um, her parents live in Efrat, which is a settlement about 15 minutes closer to Jerusalem than the Arugot farm. When we moved out to the Arugot farm, because we were the only family moving there, for my in-laws' sake, I might as well have moved to Afghanistan. <laughs> That's what it was like. It was like, what? Where are you going? Where are you taking my grandchildren? <laughs> What's happening? It was just so out of the ordinary and so unheard of 
that we would leave this beautiful community in Neve Daniel to move out to the mountains. And I don't know why we love what we love, and I don't think that no one has ever figured out that mystery, but Hashem has put a love of the land of Israel in my heart. And somehow that same fire is in everyone's heart here in the land of Israel fellowship. And it is the thing that brings all the tribes of Israel together. It's the thing that brings all people together. It is where the temple will stand as a house of prayer for all nations. There is something about the land of Israel that has the ability to bring it all together. And here we are, all of us, building not only the most strategic area in Jewish settlement in the land of Israel, but the place where King David taught the world how to pray. And as we're building that road, that was the image that came to my mind. It's like another stroke, like a paintbrush on the mountain itself, like this is our mark on the land, that we have a place in Israel that we're building together in such a holy mountain. And just what else could we ask for, that we have a global fellowship that learns Torah together, a global fellowship that prays together, and now a global fellowship that is quite literally building up the land of Israel and making her beautiful again. And on our hundredth session, where we're taught the worst thing you can do is to speak poorly of the land of Israel. And here we are making her beautiful. If you want to know a trick, love what your friends love and your friends will love you. Love what God loves and God will love you. God loves the land of Israel. So if you love what God loves, it's a trick. He just loves what you love what he loves and he's going to love you for loving what he loves. And so all of us love the land of Israel, but it's not just kind of a, a theoretical love or a theological love. We are quite literally building this monument that will last for generations that was built by this fellowship. And just what a marvelous thing to do together. And so I'm coming to the United States and my mission is to meet as many members of this fellowship as I possibly can. That's the goal. And hopefully we'll be able to spread the circle, gain more and more members of the fellowship. But really, I want to meet and spend time with as many people as we possibly can. And then, of course, to make the invitation, although you already know, the Arugot Farm is open. COVID is over, and the Arugot Farm is open for business. <laughs> and so our gates are open, and you are welcome anytime. We had our first members from the fellowship that came just, just last time, just like the last week. And it was just an absolute blessing, just a joy. And so that's what we've built this in order to in some ways, um, just model our lives after Abraham and Sarah, that there should be a place that asks no questions. Wherever you're from, whatever your background, you want to come to the land of Israel and experience the mountains of King David, you are welcome always. And so soon we'll see you in the United States, and then even better, we'll see you in the Arugot Farm, the new and improved Arugot Farm after these summer renovations. So on this 100th session of our fellowship, I just can't think of a more beautiful way to celebrate than on the parasha of those who spoke ill of the land of Israel for all of us to come together and make the land of Israel beautiful again. So thank you all so much. And I'll saw, next time we'll be broadcasting, it'll be from the other side of the world. Hi, my name is Jeremy Gimpel. A lot of people want to know exactly what the Land of Israel Fellowship is and what members receive when they join. So let me explain. The Land of Israel Fellowship is a global online community with hundreds of members from over 40 countries around the world. There are live sessions and gatherings that create a direct personal connection to the land of Israel and to lovers of Israel from around the world. There's no online gathering that I'm familiar with that is connected to the land of Israel that unites and brings together such a diverse group of people, backgrounds and nationalities. It feels like prophecy. It feels like something we need in these times, like a window in to a better future on the horizon. There's a divine unity we experience every week in our fellowship broadcast. We heard these amazing teachings from an authentic Hebrew and Israel perspective and our jaws drop. Not only because they ring so true and are such a blessing, because they are so consistent with what we believe. These Sunday morning gatherings are nothing less than a house of prayer for all nations. Cindy Lowe, the United States of America. The Land of Israel Fellowship is an amazing resource for learning Torah, the Bible, and the prophets, unfiltered and uncentered directly from the Land of Israel. We've been studying Torah for almost 20 years, but we feel we are stepping into it more than ever and seeing new depth and dimensions to Scripture. We're encouraged more and more every week. Calinardell, USA. 
Members receive access to all the archives in the library of teachings on every portion of the Torah, the biblical feasts, Hebrew prayer, prophecy, sessions on the ancient wisdom of the prophets of Israel to help us navigate through these turbulent times. These sessions are so rich. I re-listen to each, and truly each session is the best one yet. Tehila is a tremendous asset and the teachings Ari shares are so rich. I've read the Bible so many times and I've known the things you are teaching. The Hebrew understanding is what Christians have missed for centuries. Sister Georgian from Germany. The Land of Israel Fellowship is truly unique because it's built upon personal relationships with the teachers of the fellowship. Myself, Rabbi Ari Abramowitz and Tehila Gimpel. Every member has direct access to the staff 24 six via email or direct WhatsApp to ask questions, to comment, to connect directly to all the teachers. And over the last years, we've connected to some of the most beautiful people on the planet. So if you want to find out more and join the Land of Israel Fellowship, you can click on the link below. And if you want to try it out for just a month, you can email fellowship at thelandofisrael.com and we'll hook you up. I hope to see you. Shalom from the mountains of Judea.